distance. Mm. And we need to do research that actually creates some substance behind that recommendation. So real quick, because someone who goes to their doctor and their doctor says, hey, you have high LDL, and they panic right away, mm -hmm. right? And they're like, oh, they want me to get on a drug. And I can't possibly repeat everything <laughs> that Dr. Saladino just said. <laughs> and so I just throw up my hands. What is one or two sentences they can say to their doctor to say, I'm not that concerned about my high LDL because I'm not diabetic? Did you check a fasting insulin? Can we, can we evaluate my metabolic health? Mm. And if you just say, can we evaluate my metabolic health? The doctor will not know how to evaluate the metabolic health. Um. So you may need to ask them to check a fasting insulin. And the, the last piece I'll add to this <clears throat> is that it's very clear in human physiology that in many humans, eating more saturated fat and less polyunsaturated fat raises the LDL slightly, right, right. slightly, 10%, 20%, which is why a lot of people eating in this way will go to their doctor and have a quote high LDL. The last time I checked my LDL, it was 130 milligrams per deciliter, which is just above the normal range saying 120. But most doctors would say, you have a high LDL, you should mm -hmm. eat less red meat. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, eating less red meat will lower my LDL. And I could even lower my LDL more by eating canola oil. But what do we know and what are the doctors missing? Something I've hinted at a couple times in the podcast, that if you go a level deeper and you look at the predictors of cardiovascular disease, in general, LDL is pretty poor, like we talked about. What's a really good predictor? Oxidized LDL. So you're taking the phospholipids on the outside of that LDL molecule and assaying how many of them have been oxidized. And we know that oxidized LDL goes up when you eat polyunsaturated fats, even though your total LDL goes down because you're populating more of the outside of that LDL molecule with fragile fats, these polyunsaturated fatty acids. Mm. So ox LDL goes up. LP little a, which is another metric of LDL oxidation because it's a particle that kind of scavenges oxidized phospholipids, goes up when you eat polyunsaturated fatty acids, but your LDL goes down. So most physicians are just looking surface at LDL, but mm -hmm. they really we should be looking at oxidized LDL and LP little a. And remember that just because eating saturated fat makes your LDL go up, your oxidized LDL and your LP little a go down. It probably has to do with something, this word is technical, so I apologize in advance, called the homeoviscous model of membrane fluidity. And the, the high level is that when you eat more saturated fats, we know that the fats we eat become a part of our cell membranes and cells are very delicate <clears throat> and very specific about how they want to maintain membrane fluidity. And because you're eating more saturated fats, cells are probably going to raise the cholesterol in your bed, in, in your blood to keep the membrane fluidity at a, at a baseline level. So more saturated fats in the body will, in the diet, will create an uh, increase in blood cholesterol because your body's trying to maintain fluidity of the cell membrane. More polyunsaturated fats will probably lower the blood cholesterol because your body is trying to maintain fluidity of the membrane. But again, it's not, it's, it's not a bad thing. It's not pathological that when you're eating more saturated fat, the LDL is going up. It's your body just trying to keep homeostasis. Yeah, that makes wow. a lot of sense. Yeah. 